Hello! I've been working on a few different projects and I thought I'd share them. First of all, what I've done here is I duplicated a couple of uh, lit motors penny, the blocking oscillator, and here's one of his I replicated. It's the same thing you know, exactly as it is, it looks like. And another one over here that I did. And they, they both are exactly alike. Uh, and the, here, this is the same one, except I replaced the twist coils with two chokes. Littmore said that uh, you could go to a, a CFL and, and uh, take the parts out of one. You could find a couple of little uh, chokes in there that were bright green, and I looked at several of them and couldn't find any. So I uh, went down to the uh, electric shop, Chester Electric, and I bought two chokes. Here they are here. And I stuck them in there and I tied them together with a twisty so they'd be tight together and as you can see they're working quite well. I don't have a variable pot on this one. I just got a little uh, resistor stuck in here that gives me a constant frequency. But it works good. And over on this one here, instead of using the twist coils, I used two of these little wire wound chokes. At least I believe that's what they are. Uh, they, they came out of these CFLs also. But you can see I took one out right there. And I stuck them in there. I had to play around with them quite a bit. I found out they had to be on these two anyway. The uh, small one had to be there, the big one had to be there and the terminals had to be exactly where they are now or the thing wouldn't work. Played around with it quite a while to get that going, it, it, but it works great now. And on this one I've got a little uh, variable capacitor there, you can see there. It's working real good. Pretty happy with them. Uh, over here, on this one here, I'm running it, you can see it flashing away there, I'm running it with a little homemade battery. What you see there, that black thing right there, that's a brush out of a DC motor. Carbon, I presume. And over here, I have a small piece of magnesium ribbon. And a little water in there. That's been running for several days. I think it'll run for a long time. I don't see any corrosion or anything on it, so it's really doing great. This one here, I'm running with another little homemade battery. It's right here. You can see that all right. It's nothing but uh, distilled water, a uh, piece of copper, a piece of uh, magnesium ribbon, and I put a, about a teaspoon of, uh, of Epsom. <laughs> of Epsom salts. But he's all in there. I had to go look. Couldn't remember the name. <laughs> Anyway, it really works good too. That thing's been running for over a week now. And it's, you can see it's firing this one up great. And this one here, I charged up this cap right here. This is a super cap. I charged it up to about 2 volts. And that was about 4 days ago. And it's still firing away. And the last one over here, it's running off of lemon power. <laughs> Over here I just took a little piece of copper and stuck in the lemon and a piece of uh, magnesium ribbon. It's been running for probably about four or five days now. It works really good. Pretty neat. Now the next thing we'll talk about here is uh, this little uh, pulse motor that I have going here. This motor mentioned that he took a choke out of one of these uh, CFL circuits like the one I removed from here and he used it for a coil to run the uh, pulse motor. This is one of his pulse motor circuits right here. The self-starting frequency pulse motor circuit works great. And anyway, what I did is I had uh, made some pendulums and I had a little coil out of them. And that coil is uh, it's called a Major Henry 1 Milli Henry Magnet Magbot Coil. And I got it from Solarbotics. I ordered it from them. They were about two and a half dollars, but the shipping's pretty high. <laughs> See, it's kind of took out there. But I just wanted to show that coil. 
how small it is. It's it's uh, probably about the, about uh, just about the size of that nickel. Same thickness too, maybe a little thinner because it's only about sixty thousandths of an inch thick. What I did is I just took it a piece of double back tape and I stuck it on this uh, little block of wood right here to hold it, and it really runs that thing great. I have it. Uh, I, I I put about a volt and a half on this cap here to charge it up. And it was really too much. I had to stick a resistor in the line, uh, so it would run. If I take the resistor and I move it over, get it out of the line there, like so, that thing really takes off. <laughs> it's really going great. Looking good. Okay, one more thing we'll talk about here a little bit. Is the other day, the wife told me that we had a couple of burnt out CFLs in the lamp in, in the other room. So I went in and I replaced them. They were burned out and so I just put in two new bulbs. And I, th I thought, well, you know, I was just going to throw them away and I thought, well, no, I'll take them apart and see if I can salvage any parts out of them. They're, they're no good anyway, so, but maybe the parts are no good too, I don't know. But I'll try it and see what happens. These burnt out bulbs, let me turn my, uh, Exciter Slayer on here. You can see it's working great. <laughs> and I'll show you how these burnt out bulbs work. I'll just stick it in the top here. It works pretty darn good for a burnt out light bulb. I'd say. And here's the other one that I took out right here. That was, wouldn't work no more. It's uh, another burnt out bulb. It seems to work pretty good for a burnt out bulb. Not bad at all. <laughs> Needless to say, the Exciter Slayer is working quite well. You can see it's uh, lighting up nine LEDs there, and nine over here, and two in the center, and there's a neon lit up, and another LED over here. And I'm sure if I took a four foot uh, fluorescent bulb, a 40 watt right now, and held next to it, it lighted it up too. I think it really works good. I'm very happy with that. Uh, talk a little bit more one, about one more thing here. The uh, batteries, cement batteries that I made. I said I'd do a little update on them. Uh, I ran them initially. I had uh, this motor on one and this motor here on another. And I ran them for 26 days I believe it was. And they finally petered out and then I shortened them out and uh, let them rest overnight or I shorted them out overnight and then I let them rest the next day for a couple hours then I hooked them up again and they ran for another 14 days and right now what I'm doing is that they petered out so I shorted them out again and I let them set overnight and, I, and again I let them rest the next day and right now I have them both in parallel and I'm running this motor here with them, just doing another test to see how long they'll go. I'll let you know when the time comes. Well, I guess that's about it for today. Been having a lot of fun with this stuff. I hope you are too. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Burnt out CFL. Going strong. Thanks again.